What's up guys, Barry Game here, back with some more AFK Journey news for July 26, 2024, and it looks like we have another talk with the designers and the future optimizations, new season preview, and more. And to be honest, I've already read through this multiple times. Most of this is a huge W. Some things are visual changes to make you feel better about things. Other things are actual things like resetting the exclusive of a weapon from a hero you might not use anymore so hopefully you guys enjoy this one let's jump right into it because this is really good news for afk journey okay let's jump right into it talk with the designers hey the final update for song of strife season is coming soon and we're closely monitoring your feedback now we'll cover the major changes in the upcoming features which is really good talk with the designers hell yes so major adjustments in version 1.1.17 to celebrate the launch of afk journey in new countries aka the uh, Asian countries that, that it's launching in, uh, we'll be updating the hero list of the all hero available event and adjust some of the event rewards in the final version. Players who have already claimed these rewards will receive compensation to cover the difference. The new hero list will include all heroes released before August 8th, which means you're gonna be getting hero copies in it like Alsa, Soren, Olmus, you know who else? Taylene and Freyesto. Yes, so you're gonna be able to get at least one copy of those newer ones as well, which is really huge. Number two, they're going to enhance the competitive experience, narrowing the gap between server ranking rewards in Dream Realm. Uh, so that still means the rankings are still going to be the rankings, but the rewards are going to get better for those in the lower tiers, which is awesome. Temporal shards will be added to the daily uh, ranking rewards below a server or below for a server's top 100. You'll be able to use these shards to craft temporal essence. That is awesome. Uh, new daily quests, such as recruit one time, will be added, giving you extra diamonds every single day. We're also updating the features in the starter story. Please check version 1.1.1 patch notes when it comes out. So all that right there, huge Ws. We're going to get like five additional S-level heroes and, and A-level heroes and all this other stuff. That That's just really, really good. Season optimization. So I really like this. So... We're inducing new items to let you swap the tier and exclusive equipment progress between two heroes of the same quality, A to A, S to S, released in the next new season. These items will offer the chance to reset a hero and reduce the cost of the hero development. You'll be able to earn them through in-game events. That is absolutely huge. Ex exclusive equipment is like... It's so annoying. If you if you invest in it and then the hero doesn't become meta anymore, it's like, well, you're just stuck with like a plus 10 on that hero that you're not going to use anymore. So that's a huge W, and it seems like you can get them through in-game events and not spending, although you might be able to spend two. We'll have to see. Uh, starting in September, Starter Story will be able to be unlocking the season content once they reach 240 and they complete this Tales. That's amazing. No longer do you have to wait for 42 days. It's just once you get to 240, you can jump right into the new season. There is one downside of that, and that's whales will probably get there faster, uh, but it also means you're not just sitting there AFK for like 15 days waiting for a season to start, which is really, really cool. This change will allow players to access season faster, which is good. As previously announced, we'll balance the XP and experience rewards from the AFK stages in the early season. I like that. We're also working on several optimizations to minimize the residence level gap among players during the first couple weeks. That's also huge because sometimes if you feel like you're not playing like four hours a day in the first couple weeks, you are behind, which is cool. I really like this change here. This is one of my complaints. We understand starting at residence level one, it feels like a setback, which can be frustrating. This is really just a misconception because it's a more of a visual effect. You're still getting your starter story residence level and power. So to address this, they're just gonna optimize the design. You're basically just gonna start at level 240 and level up from there instead of starting from level one. I personally like that. It's like a psychological thing, I think. And I think that will help me because I know I was probably one of the biggest complainers about starting at level one again. I'm cool with this because again, it, most of it is a mental thing. Like it's just psychological and that's pretty cool. And then starting a new season in September, players will enter at residence level 240. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I, it, it makes it feel a little better. I, I know it's technically the same thing. Again, psychology, it does wonders. All right, so season settlement. A new season will begin in September and Song of Strife season will be concluding. All seasonal hero upgrades, progress, rankings, and rewards will be reset. Your server will join a new district at that time, so you'll get new enemies to face, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I kind of hope we get ones that don't have a lot of whales because the one we're in right now has a lot of megalodons. Uh, at the beginning of the new season, you'll receive rewards based on your progress at the season, residence level, season equipment, artifacts, etc. 
We'll share more details on how that's going to calculate and what you get, which is pretty cool. And again, you got to remember, we're still like five, six weeks away from that. So just keep that in mind. Season highlights. We're introducing new events requiring strategic hero lineups for abundant rewards. On top of that, we're also refining existing game modes such as Arcane Labyrinth and Honor Duel. Just give us something to do with Arcane Labyrinth. Like it's just a useless game mode right now. While increasing their rewards, stay tuned. Guild has always been a key social feature in AFK Journey, and we hope to fully enjoy the fun of multiplayer mode and social interaction. We'll have more modes. Cool. Uh, we're providing a customization for cosmetics. Again, that's not something I personally care about, but some of you might. We're excited to introduce new faction-based mechanics in the upcoming season. This will allow you to give one or two heroes on your team new abilities that will grant greatly boost their strength in battle. This mechanic will add a new layer to your battle strategies and allow for more creative building. I think I'll like that better than Magic Charms. I, I I really didn't care much for Magic Charms, especially how it's like, well, they're going away anyway, so I don't care at this point. Uh, so that's cool. We'll adjust this mechanic each season to keep your experience fresh and engaging. It will be available in specific modes like Legend Trial to avoid major disruptions to re resource acquisition in modes such as Dream Realm. That's really cool. So Dream Realm stays kind of static, whereas other game modes get this effect. I like that. At number five, we'll be rolling out some updates and optimizations based on your feedback, including less grinding, preset formations, and dueling between friends. Oh my god, I'm going to PvP so much. Dueling between friends is where the content is going to be for testing out teams, and this is going to be amazing. One more note here. They wanted to talk about the rate up recruitment info. I say many people are curious about why rate up recruitments are available for A-level heroes. Here's the reasoning behind it. First, recruitment systems in our game work differently than those in other games. The rate up recruitment is designed to make it easier for you to get a new hero that you want. New heroes will be available in the rate up recruitment for a limited time, and once they are, they go to the wishlist select list. Second, there is no significant power gap between A-level and S-level heroes. Their difference lie primarily in their sources and the difficulty of recruiting them. Each hero has a unique role and can shine in different scenarios, so it's up to you to discover their strength again i'm not a i'm like i'm not against the whole a level thing I, I there's like some of my favorite heroes in the game are literally a level like like merrily corin odie coco like i can go on and on so many of them are so good damien i freaking love damien he's like one of the best pvp healers in the game a levels are not a negative thing in my opinion they're actually I think very healthy to have more of them in the game, especially when they are good as well. So let me know what you guys think about all this. I'm super hyped about all this information. I mean, we're getting more hero copies alone. Like, uh, it's just really, really awesome. Really good. You're getting exclusive equipment swap over. You're not starting at level one, which again, you technically are, but you're not at the same time. Uh, I'm, I'm hyped for this. Uh, this is... Every time we get a talk with the designers, it feels like it's moving in the right direction. Are there still issues? Yeah. Are there still things I would change? Absolutely. But where we stand right now, I'm feeling pretty good. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this as well. And I'll see you guys next time.